Hi friends, today we are going to talk about mitral incompetence case. So we have already dealt with mitral stenosis. Another important examination case that uh, being kept is mitral incompetence. So mitral incompetence may be isolated as well as it may be combined with mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation. Now we are going to uh, see how we are seeing the case of mitral regurgitation being kept in the examination. So probably the diagnosis which we have to write is we have to write about the least what is the lesion and what is the etiology and uh, what are the complications the patient is having and whether the patient in the sinus rhythm. So in the diagnosis, ultimately, if you are writing a diagnosis, you should say the patient is a, a case of mitral incorregulation, probably of rheumatic etiology. Most mitral disease is first and foremost etiology is rheumatic with the features of left heart failure, right heart failure, or congestive cardiac failure. When both are present, we have to tell us congestive cardiac failure with pulmonary hypertension and patient in the sinus rhythm. If the patient is in sinus rhythm, you have to tell sinus rhythm. And if the patient is with the atrial fibrillation, you have to tell patient is in atrial fibrillation. And without any features of infective endocarditis or anything, we can tell. So this is the ultimate diagnosis we have to tell. And the features uh, yeah, in the history taking and in the examination, there should be corroborative evidence for this diagnosis. Then only we can boldly tell this diagnosis, right? So mitral valve anatomy, we have already dealt with mitral stenosis case. It is kind of mitral valve annulus, leaflets, so with commissures, cardiac and in a papillary muscle supporting left ventricular valve, LV valve. So this is the way uh, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, cardiac and in a papillary muscle and everything. Because in a memory, you can we'll see later when the anterior mitral leaflet, the memory will be radiated to the um, axilla and when posterior mitral leaflet is involved, it will be murmur will be radiated toward the base. So symptomatology is almost similar to mitral stenosis case. So it patient will have a exertional dyspnea, orthopnea, PND, all the features suggestive of uh, left heart failure, fatigue, recurrent respiratory tract infection, palpitation may be due to even LVH as well as due to RVH. Both will occur in uh, mitral incompetence and edema of feet due to congestive cardiac failure. So right heart failure, patient will have edema of, of the feet as well as the uh, right uh, right hypochondrial pain due to congestive epitomaly and as well as features of infective endocarditis like fever, embolic episodes, anemia. All this may be symptomology. So any case of CVS is being given, the patient though complains of only one or two symptoms, you should uh, ask for a history of all other symptoms. If the patient complains of dyspnea and orthopnea, you should also ask about the P, P and D, you should ask about chest pain, palpitation, dyspnea, and other pedal edema, right heart features suggestive of right heart failure, pedal edema, right hypochondrial pain. And you are should ask about the history of suggestive of any fever due to rheumatic, acute rheumatic fever or due to infected endocarditis. So all this negative history, if at all present, or you have to ask about the negative history also to complete the case history. So what is the pathophysiology in mitral regurgitation? Almost what happened, mitral 50% of the regurgitant volume is ejected into left atrium before aortic valve happens. So left atrium, left ventricle. What will happen? The, from the left ventricle, the blood has to go into the aorta. But since this valve is problematic, this valve is dilated or regurgitated. So what will happen? So the left ventricle when come contracts, most of the blood doesn't go into the aorta, but it goes into the left atrium. So what happens? Left atrium pressure will increase. So then it will go into the pulmonary vein. So lung will get congested. And so patient will have a dyspnea and everything. Then it goes into the pulmonary artery. So the patient will have pulmonary hypertension. Then it will pass on the right ventricle. So the patient will have right ventricle hypertrophy. Then in right atrium. And so patient will have a right heart failure like genuine JVT, fetal edema and everything. This is the pathophysiology. So left ventricle. So left atrium from the left atrium blood comes here. Usually since this valve is dilated, this left, whenever the left ventricle contracts, the blood is not going. Only few 
um, percentage of bread goes outside, and most of the bread goes again into the left atrium. So left atrial volume increases. So left atrium goes all this pressure, left atrial pressure increases, then it goes into the pulmonary vein. So lung gets congested, pulmonary edema occurs, orthosmia PAD occurs, then this pressure is again transmitted to the pulmonary artery. From pulmonary artery, it is again transmitted to right ventricle. So RV gets occurs, then right atrium, then right arterial elevated JVP, PAD edema, congested epitomally. So almost, this is the best of the, in almost 50% regular agent volume is ejected into left atrium before aortic valve. Even before aortic valve opens, almost all the blood goes into the left atrium. The volume of MR flow depends on regenerative orifice area. When the orifice is big, so more amount of blood goes into the left atrium. And also pressure gradient between left atrium and left ventricle. Pressure gradient depends on systemic vascular resistance. Systemic means aortic resistance. When the aortic resistance is high, what will happen? Most of the blood will go into the left atrium. So this is the pressure gradient. Regression orifice area depends on the mitral analysis that is proportional to preload and afterload and inversely proportional to contractility. Okay, this we suggest this should be. It is known that abnormally left elevated left atrial left atrial pressure gradient is a hemodynamic hallmark of MS. This is the same uh, event here. Also in MR, the events in MR goes like this, increased left atrial pressure, increased pulmonary venous pressure, increased pulmonary capillary bridge pressure, decreased compliance of lung, dyspnea, then pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular hypertrophy, right atrial failure, right heart failure, pedal edema, and everything occurs. This is the pathophysiology. So palpitation is due to left ventricular hypertrophy, and or atrial fibrillation. Palpitation is the MS is due to RVH or atrial fibrillation. So in MS, it is due to RVH. Left, left ventricular right doesn't hypertrophy as well as left ventricle doesn't fail in MS. The ventricle that won't fail in MS is left ventricle. But here in MR, both the ventricle may fail. So, but the palpitation is due to LVH here as well as atrial fibrillation. In MS is due to RVH or atrial fibrillation. So what are the things you have to see in the general examination? Patient may be in the decubitus in a proper position or he may be sitting because of dyspnea, orthopnea, PND, and pulse rate may be one time per minute, regular, it may be regular or irregular if the patient is having uh, atrial fibrillation. Pulse pressure may be wide because this is hyperdynamic circulation like so white pulse pressure will be there. JVP will be enlarged and pulsatile. Patient will have pedal edema and pitting pedal edema. So these two points you have to definitely, these three points you have to definitely tell in the case of mitral digestion. Mostly it will be about the JVP, pedal edema and white pulse pressure. So these are very commonly seen in mitral digestion with pulmonary repetition and everything. So on inspection, you may see that the pig body may be bulged. Patient may have epigastric pulsation due to right ventricular hypertrophy and right heart failure, and so patient may have epigastric pulsation. Apical impulse usually shifted down and outward because what will happen? More amount of blood goes, doesn't go out through the aorta, it goes into the left atrium. What happens? Left atrium is more voluminous. Again, the blood, blood where it goes again, it comes into the left ventricle, uh, left ventricle. So left ventricle keeps on dilating and enlarging. So when there's a LVH, the apical impulse will be shifted down and outwards. When it is RVH, it will be shifted outwards. What happened here? It is commonly LVH. So the apical impulse will be shifted down and outwards. So parasternal lift may be there. And palpation, we can confirm the apical impulse that is shifted down and outwards. The character, it will be hyperdynamic in character because this is a hyperdynamic circulation like, like anemia, Thyrotoxicosis, mitral regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, all these will have hyperdynamic in character. You can see a systolic thrill that is present in the apical area, which is best palpable in left lateral position and at the height of expiration. The thrill may be there, parasternal left, parasternal cave may be there if there is an RVH. P2 may be loud, and so when you just keep over here, being in the left is again, you can close the place, you can see, you can palpate the P2, palpable P2. So in palpation, you should tell the apical impulse shifted down and outwards. You should tell that there is a hyperdynamic in character. 
you, you should you have to verify whether the P2 is palpable. You should look after the parasternal cue. And thrill, thrill in the mitral area. So thrill in the mitral area is the classic that it, it may indicate the patient probably having grade four murmur. On auscultation, mostly in mitral regurgitation, the yes one would be soft. In MS, it will be loud. Yes two may be just present or audible. But in pulmonary area, what will happen as the mitral regurgitation goes on, all this pressure I have told, all the pathophysiology. So what happened? Pulmonary artery high B pressure will also increase. So patient may have loud P2. So on pathway vision, you can have palpable P2 or palpable pulmonary valve closure. Here in auscultation, you can see loud P2. P2 is loud and yes to widely split in pulmonary hypertension. Okay. Yes, four. Yes, four may be heard in acute MR. When the patient have acute MR, you can see what are the cause of acute MR. S4 may be heard in acute MR. So any murmur, we have to tell all this quality, whether the bad was heard, whether it's systolic murmur or diastolic, what the timing, whether it's pan systolic or early diastolic, early systolic or pre-systolic, like those things, all this we have to tell, you have to tell intensity, pitch, burst heard with bell or diaphragm, conducted to anywhere else, variation to respiration, variation of posture, dynamic palpitation. So this timing which you have to be angry. And after this, my this is called dynamic consultation. So, all these points you have to try to tell in any case when you are describing a murmur. So, what uh, what's the commonest uh, character of a murmur in a mitral regurgitation? So, mitral regurgitation, it will be a high pitched murmur. I have already told low. When a synotic murmur or low pitch, you have a flu, synotic, yes, flow. You just have a slow. Mm. So synotic murmur or low pitch. What is this? This is a regurgitated murmur. So it's high pitch, soft, blowing. This will be a cold All the murmur will be uniformly from yes one till yes two. This is called transistor murmur. Mostly they when it is associated with thrill, you have to tell it is a grade four intensity. Systolic murmur you have six grades and diastolic murmur four grades. Grade 4 basic intensity, which is best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Diaphragm of the stethoscope. So, all mostly the regurgitated murmur will be better heard with diaphragm. You just have this flow, this are mnemonic. Flow, synotic, flow, low pitch. Regurgitated murmur mostly will be better heard with diaphragm. Regurgitated, you just have this mnemonic. So, regurgitation, diaphragm. Synotic murmur with bell. So what happens in mitral stenosis? We are better heard is with bell of the stethoscope. And left lateral portion, the best heard in the left lateral portion. It's just uh, you know, almost all the AT ventricular valve, well, left mid mitral valve, LT speed valve, well, or all this the murmur valve in the near the apex. When you have heard mostly they will have a better heard in left lateral portion. But Apex, the semi lunar valve environment, like pulmonary valve, aortic valve, all this murmur will be better heard in the leaning forward. So, empty ventricular valve mostly left lateral and semi lunar valve environment mostly leaning forward. Mostly, this is not almost an entire dictum, but mostly it will be just true to tell at least uh, the points you have to tell. And right sided murmurs, right sided murmurs are better heard with inspiration. The left sided murmur expression. You just remember the ring so far, like those things. So ring right inspiration. So left will be with the expression. So mitral valve is left atrial ventricle. Left left sided valve. Mm, left atrial ventricular valve. So what will happen? It's left, so it will be better heard with expression. Okay. These are the flow. So, and also you have to tell where the murmur is radiating. So, this commonly mitral regurgitation murmur will be radiated towards the left axilla and even up to the inferior angle of the scapula. So, this, this whenever you ask it, you should also tell where it's radiation or radiating also. So, when it is anterior leaflet is involved, it will be radiated towards the axilla. You just have A, A. When your posterior leaflet of the mitral valve is involved, it will be towards the base. It may be radiated towards the pulmonary area or aortic area. Like P, B, A, A. 
So nitric graduation murmur will be a high pitched, sound blowing, pan systolic, grade four intensity with acetyl ethyl, best heard with the diaphragm of the spoke in left lateral position at the height of expiration. And the murmur is radiating toward the left axilla or in the inferior angle of capra. These all these points you have to tell in a mitotic graduation murmur. Uh, this clue it will give us somewhat point in telling you you cannot you need not remember it. You can just tell any murmur like this with these clues. So after this, I already told F1 will be absent of spot buried in the photosynthetic murmur. So but in numbers. Typically, it will be loud. In patients with EMR, here we may, may close prematurely resulting white, but it's all the putting of yes. So, so yes, it will be primary hypertension. It may be loud, and it, there may be cytologic splitting of yes. So more weight to cytologic splitting of yes. So a low pitch the yes thing occurring 0 0.12 to 0 0.17 seconds after the AV closes, and that is at the complete of the rapid filling phase of AV may occur. S1, soft, S2, just present, but here in the pulmonary area it will be loud due to loud P2. S3 may also be present, as well as S4 will be present only when the patient is having acute severe MR and the patient probably in patient being in sinus rhythm. So the systolic murmur of a chronic MR is usually most prominent at the apex and radius to the axilla. Chronic severe MR will be systolic murmur pan systolic and polycystic. But when the patient just now developed a murmur pan uh, MR like due to baplet muscle rupture or ischemia, it is mostly it won't be pan systolic, it may be decrescendo and it ceases even in mid to late system. So in chronic severe MR, the murmur may be polycystic, but in acute severe MR, just recently developed murmur, the MR. It may be deep to and it will be lasting only up to mid or late system. But that's a classical chronic thing. The systolic murmur may have a chewing or feedback quality called seasonal murmur. This I have told. But a set chronic thing is a primary environment of posterior management to eat that. Products of the the of the 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 involvement. The base of the heart means aortic area and pulmonary area. And you may think that it is due to aortic stenotic murmur. It may mimic like that, but you should you should. Point out where the murmur is better heard. So, when the murmur is better in mitral area, tell it as mitral murmur. Aortic murmur may be also at a better in mitral area. That's called galavadin phenomena. You in the exam, certain exam may have called it galavadin. So, mitral aortic phenotic murmur better in mitral area is called galavadin phenomena. So, inch by inch, when you ask it from mitral area to aortic area, we can diagnose where the murmur is better heard. So, when posterior mitral leaflet is involved, the murmur may be radiated toward the base. And so, patient may have see a murmur like synotic that of, right? MR murmur is increased by hand grip and decreased due to straining phase of valsalva. This is just, just physiology. So, what will happen when you just have a hand grip? All the peripheral vascular resistance increases. So, what happens? So, more blood may not, so, aortic pressure will also increases. So, more blood may not come out of the aorta and it will more be go into the left atrium. So, regenerative flow volume will be more. And so, patient may have more murmur. That's called memoir murmur is increased by hand grip. Decreased due to during straining phase of valsalva. So, during training, more increased venous return may not be there. And so, the patient may have more 
patient will have a increased venous return and so patient may not have a regurgitant in murmur and all the it will be a forward flow and patient may not have a murmur. Murmur will decrease. So this thing, another thing they will talk about, what are the three stages of MR? So three stages are acute MR, chronic compensated, chronic decompensated. So of course, in the chronic compensated, patient may not have features of heart failure, left heart failure, right heart failure. So the patient may not be complaints, may not be having any complaints. When not patient have complaints, it is decompensated. When the patient have Dyspnea, orthopnea, P and D, and patient period edema, everything is decompensated. So, the three stages of MR acute, chronic compensated, and chronic decompensated. So, this is all this I think I will draw it for. So, now what happens in the acute MR? So, blood in the, left, blood in the left ventricle, more volume overload because. It goes into the left atrium and again the same volume comes back into the left ventricle. So there's a more volume overload. So total increased outstroke volume will be more. Forward stroke volume plus regurgitant. So stroke volume will be there as well as the regurgitant blood will also be there. So there will be more stroke volume. But actually what happens, most of the blood doesn't go outside the iota. Again and again, it goes into the left atrium. And so left ventricular dilatation occurs, volume and pressure overload is that is in the left pulmonary capillary which pressure will also pulmonary venous pressure will increase, pulmonary capillary by which pressure will increase, and so patient may have pulmonary edema. So normal acute MR in chronic MR, this is the thing. So what happens in chronic MR? You have both the left ventricle also gets dilated as well as left ventricle gets hypertrophy. And so, dilated left atrium is also will be there, but the pressure won't be so much in left atrium. The left atrium gets dilated and it, com it compensates the extra blood volume. So, the pressure won't be so much. And so, since the left atrium pressure is not so much, left ventricle, left uh, permanent venous pressure is not also not, not so much elevated and the patient doesn't have so much symptoms. But what happens into the acute MR? Almost all the blood when it goes into the left atrium, left atrium not able to co compensate all this increased blood volume. So the left atrial pressure is very high. So this uh, reciprocally goes into the left pulmonary venous pressure increases, pulmonary capillary which pressure and pulmonary edema occurs. So what is between between uh, acute and chronic is here left ventricle enlarges as well as left ventricle hypertrophies as well as the left atrium is also dilated. So it is not yet able to cope up the extra volume of blood. And so dyspnea is not so much. But in acute MR, the left atrial pressure is high, but here it's normal. So it immediately transmits all the pressure into the lungs and so pulmonary edema occurs. So stages I have told, acute MR, chronic compensated MR, chronic decompensated MR. So in the exam also, you can tell probably this patient is a chronic decompensated mitral regurgitation because patient is symptomatic. So when the patient is symptomatic, you can tell like those things. So pain is so common. What are the etiologies? You have to tell. Common many three etiologies you have should not forget. So first you have to tell any mitral disease. The first etiology is rheumatic, rheumatic, rheumatic. Mitral or product syndrome may also produce mitral regurgitation. And ischemic cardiac problems, so ischemic disruption of thyroid muscle or cardiac engine due to ischemic heart disease. So, whenever there is a myocardial infarction, it may cause damage to the papillary muscle, and the patient may have papillary muscle rupture or anything of to do to cardiac and eruption. And so, patient may have mitral regurgitation, it's called ischemic MR. Function absolutely the LV due to dilatation of mitral ring and found in systemic hypertension, aortic disease. So, what happened when there's a AAS, aortic stenosis, aortic incompetence, or infected endocardial myocarditis? All this left ventricular valve, left ventricle gets hypertrophic, and so uh, the all these leaflets will also get dilated. That's called the secondary dilatation of the mitral ring, and so patient may have a Mitral so, due to and there's a the left ventricular left dilatation, so it may produce a secondary dilatation of the mitral ring, and so patient may have murmur. 
acute myocardial infarction, traumatic during mitral stenotic when you are operating for mitral stenosis and mild vertebrae, you can mm. produce uh, mitral regurgitation, mm. infective endocarditis, all collagenous mm. disease, gomapon, long day, cell, gomatal arthritis, ankylosis, pondylitis. These are also important cause for mitral regurgitation, dilated cardiac of the ankylosis. So you should not forget total rheumatic mitral valve product syndrome, ischemic cardiac, ischemic uh, mitral regurgitation, ोमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेटिसमेट
more amount of blood goes into the left atrium due to leakage lesion. But what happens still since there's a more blood in the left atrium, again it has start to come over into the left ventricle. So it may produce yeah, mid diastolic numbering marma. The functional limits and it's not a true illness. Radiation of normal, we have already discussed in possible matter limit of affection. In radius to the antibody and to the pulmonary area. Pulmonary area even to the aortic area. But in classical case of MI, mostly it will be referred to the anti inferior angle left axilla and inferior angle of left axilla. So A, A is just have T, B. So posterior mitral leaflet, pulmonary area or base. You just remember like those things. Rheumatic MI commonly affects rheumatic mitral leaflet, commonly affects anti mitral leaflet. So common is anti mitral leaflet and so the murmur will be radiated towards the axilla. So DD of murmur, mostly when they were you're telling Francis, you know, what is the DD they will ask? So you said, say, functional murmur, usually soft, not transistory. It won't be cold or systolic, it will be just be a short systolic. Don't read it to the accident without any thrill. There won't be any thrill, no, there will be no any change of posture or respiration. Functional means when there's all hyperdynamic circulation, since there is increased circulation, there may patient may have a like anemia, thyrotoxicus, very, very, uh, all this may have a. Uh, functional murmur and so it passes a functional a systolic murmur and it may not be related to change of posture and respiration and it's not cold or systolic it just has this vsd vsd commonly will be present in the childhood but the murmur will be best heard in the left lower sternal border left lower sternal border mostly in the tricuspid area it will be better heard rather than the mitral area this the thrill will be more commonly present in left lower llsb left lower Sternal area. It is mostly towards the tricuspid area rather than mitral area. Aortic sinner murmur may be also be conducted toward the mitral area. We have showed, I already told. So, IAS murmur, it will be ejection systolic, but mitral degeneration murmur will be pan systolic. It will be harsh, but it won't be here. here. It's, this phenomenon is called Galavadin phenomenon. Galavadin for mitral sinner murmur. So always have an inch by inch auscultation, just centimeter by centimeter auscultation from the aortic area to the mitral area. You can see where the intensity is higher and you can just diagnose that. The quality of the murmur will be different. Tricuspid regurgitation. So always MS that close DD is tricuspid stenosis as well as M MI or MR the close DD is tricuspid regurgitation. So all this I have told already. So what will happen to the right side will murmur, left side will murmur. You just tell all those things, it will be useful. In tricuspid stenosis, it will be more because of right or failure in the patient in labor, in neck pain, which is the CC of murmur may not be conducted. That's the group is an agent in murmur with inspiration because it is right-sided murmur. And it is left-sided murmur. It will be better heard with expiration. Best part with the tricuspid area, this murmur will be better for the mental area. So just have a mind, and so you just have the DD and just help. VSD, tricuspid regurgitation, nitrogenotic murmur, and all functional murmurs of the DD for a systolic murmur. So the way it's called pan systolic, it's not immediately with the S1 and continues through the S4. Uniform intensity, the murmur will be uniform, but in the uh, IT side murmur, it will be crescendo, decrescendo, it will be harsh, but it will be in uh, MR, it will be uniform. Why the murmur is pan systolic? As soon as the LV pressure exceeds leptative pressure just after the S1, the regurgitant jet of blood goes from the left ventricle to left atrium and continues to flow throughout the till the S2 occurs. Uh, at that, uh, that bit until the left atrial pressure exceeds left ventricle pressure. That is why the murmur is that is done. So left ventricle blood goes up. As the left ventricle pressure will be high, it will go on filling after the S1, it will go on filling to the left atrial left atrium. The blood and until the left atrial pressure exceeds the left ventricle, then the murmur will get ceased. Then only the so this will happen almost from S1, starting from the S1 to the 
yes two almost overlaps with yes two and so the murmur is parasitic so intensity of the murmur will be very intense in grading system so grade one paint are soft so we have to put special effort we have to buy exact the patient and put in some more effort like those things it will be soft grade three moderate grade four will be loud with presence of pill very loud with associated with pill extremely loud and maybe very with put it to the scope and it will also be associated with pill pill is absent in grade one and two so diastolic marmot are only graded up to four so only in systolic marmot there will be six grades in diastolic only up to loud with pill So this is just again um, EPR hematization. It may be primary or organic. Primary rheumatic etiology, infected endocarditis, fibrinolysis, inflammatory lesion, MVP microbial plus everything. Secondly, the annular dilatation. I told when that's the point where I put the valve open, it gets dilated, and so it is it may result in mitral degeneration. Dilated cardiomyopathy. What happens? All the ventricles, all the chambers get dilated, and so the mitral valve also get dilated, and so we have a murmur. Applied muscle rupture in acute time by heart attack, vein rupture. All these will also be secondary, and that may do result in mitral degeneration. So all this is just a picture and representation of cause of cause of mitral degeneration murmur. So few difference between whether it's an acute murmur or chronic murmur. And non set of symptoms like this, you know, PNB and symptoms have also been able to be there. Here, it will be a gradual onset, and patient may be compensated, and pain or patient may not be having any complaint. Affects me unremarkable because an acute tumor, left ventricular hypertrophy would not have occurred immediately. But here, left ventricular hypertrophy would have occurred. So, it will be displaced down and downward. First of all, stop normal. Here, also, it will be normal or stop. Marburn will be. Chronic MR, it will be follow systolic, but here it will be decreasing though it will last only early systolic or just mid systolic. It won't be it won't be follow systolic. It may be that, but mostly it will be early or mid systolic or until mid systolic. So, but here definitely it will be follow systolic. Yes, four is commonly heard in acute MR. I already told yes, four may not be that when the patient is in sinus rhythm. Chronic MR, yes, it will be in left ventricular hypertrophy or will be there. But here, left ventricular hypertrophy would not have occurred. AF is not there because the atrial enlargement is not so much. So, atrial fibrillation will not be there. Here, it will be plus LVH. So, exactly. In also where normal, except in MI, patient may have ST elevation. Heart shape should be normal because this acute MR is more cardiac. Yes, so cause of acute MR like the fat like muscle rupture or acute MI like those things. Here, left ventricular enlargement, left ventricular enlargement, high shield of the wall leaflets, like um, the flare leaflet, ruptured cardiac engine or vegetation, all this may be seen in GIFO. So, this is the void for how to differentiate the acute and chronic MR. So, again, this thing. So this thing when I, I have already discussed, left atrial pressure will be more in acute MR, but in chronic MR it won't be there. It won't be there. Left atrial pressure will be normal here. It will be dilated. This way the patient will have a atrial fibrillation will be there. Mitral lipolysis. I have told you have to tell late not in non-injection systolic clean quick. That is common in 0.14 seconds after yes one. Mid or late non ejection systolic click. So it is in IFX phenotic murmur also, they may have ejection click. It is called ejection click. Here it is non ejection systolic click after S1. So, how will you determine the severe of the murmur? MR, they lost. So, when there's a systolic click, it is severe. Large left ventricular indicates severe MR, that means LVH, when the epical impulse shifted down or outwards, like left to sixth intercostal phase, and the just anti-rectional line, like those things, that means just shifted down and outward means the patient having left ventricular hypertrophy. that also indicates severe MR. Presence of S3 also indicates patient has severe MR. 
pro MDM is also in the area of MR. We call the things. Yeah, based on this, we can tell. But when the patient have a lot of feed to, and the patient have a right of failure, feed is ready for everything, like um, right type of audit being, like congesting a photomary, plastic feed is ready for all, all this also indicate test with a VA MR. Right, that's the press. So, G can also you have to see. So, tender abdomen is common. Screen may be there if the patient is having infected endocarditis. I said it may or may not be present. So, respiratory system, you have to ask for the bilateral basis press or the any hydro press or poor location, everything. So, features of LVS goes down and outward. RVS, outward. Patient may have left person with you, patient may have epigastric pulsation. The coordinate signs of left heart failure, patient may have S3, S4, along with S1 and S2. It's called triple rhythm or gallop rhythm. So in the MR, patient may have S3 as well as S4 when the patient has good MR, so patient called gallop rhythm. The presence of gallop rhythm indicates heart failure. And base of press at lung base. These are the features signs of left ventricular failure. So left ventricular failure, bilateral basal press, and gallop rhythm with S3 or S4. Yeah, there are two types quadruple gallop in which you have S1, S2, S3, and S4. Separate is called quadruple gallop. Summation gallop in which S1, S2 will be there, then S3 and S4 may be over and over superimposed. That is called summation gallop. So, left heart failure, basal crust. By that, we are telling, and with, by with gallop rhythm, you can tell left heart failure. Right sided failure, you can tell, tell these are the features like elevated JVP, soft and lever, bilateral pedal edema, oliguria, peripheral sinosis, pulsatile liver, GA tract during symptoms like anorexia, anoxia, vomiting, right heart pain due to stretching, hepatic capsule, cardiac cachexia. This is also very rare, at least elevated JVP, soft and deliver, bilateral pedal pitting pedal edema, oliguria. All these features, pulse liver, all these features of right heart failure. So, when are in the ski taking our examination, we have to tell whether there's a signs of a left heart failure in the examination, left heart failure, right heart failure. And both are present, it's just a little congestive cardiac failure. These are the things that may prescribe your cardiac failure, like anemia, pregnancy, respiratory heart infection, stack, and we have sympathy and disease, permanent thrombolysis, thrombolysis, stereotoxins, and ongoing rheumatic action. So I have told there are patients with characters, hyperdynamic, forceful, and we sustain impulse, like with diet for the world of the left ventricle, like myotic regurgitation, myotic regurgitation, VAP, ADA, and hyperdynamic circulation. All this will be forceful and well sustained. PV is forceful and well sustained. It is commonly left ventricular systolic overload, like layers, hypertension, poetation, hypertension, obstetric, cardiomyopathy. In these conditions, AES, system hypertension, poetation, obstetric, cardiomyopathy, there will be severe or static left ventricular dystrophy, and so, stationary PV. IEM, all the left ventricular everybody will be dilated because of the volume overload. So you hear all this volume overload that's called hyperdynamic. The volume overload effect is called hyperdynamic. The slow overload effect is called TV. Tapping is commonly present in MS. But it's not just but it's tapping, not tapping, but it's looking. You notice this tapping is just a twin pass over like globally. Hypokinetic. The thrust felt by the hand is minimal. The sound found in acute myocardial infection, pericardial effusion, constricted pericarditis, mixed edema, peripheral psychiatric failure, failure. The thrust may be very minimum. And even in obese patients, uh, it may be minimal. Normal. Normal is bit present in the half inch medial to the mid-clacral line. So, pulmonary hypertension is also present mostly in MS also in metal regulation. When you examine you measure that more normal pressure is 25 per 10 millimeter of mercury. When pulmonary mean or the pulmonary artery is more than 25 millimeter of mercury. 
the breast are more than 30 millimeter of mercury during a patient to tell patient is saying primary hypertension. This symptom to be breast is just irritability, dizziness, symptoms, chest pain, cough, even of patient is everything. In the daily thing, the behavior will be prominent. Central stenosis may be there due to pulmonary edema. Infection there will be seen in the left, second, and third pulmonary area. Epigazi pulsation is there. Spasical P2 may be there. Left parasitic may be there. So, whenever you can get more, you can see that the visible parasitic pulsation will be seen. You have to tell in the inspection finding also. S1 audible pulmonary ejection click. Ejection is historic murmur. When there is a pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary hypertension, you may have a developed pulmonary ejection systolic murmur due to related obstruction of pulmonary orifice. It's gratum seed murmur due to pulmonary regurgitation or to may occur. So, high pitch the yearly diastolic decrease from the murmur due to functional pulmonary incompetence. Pulmonary vomiting dilation. So the pulmonary ejection is not severe due to that the pulmonary murmur get dilated and so there will be a regurgitation. Pulmonary regurgitation may occur. That pulmonary regurgitation is called a murmur is called yearly as a high regurgitation. It will be yearly diastolic. It will be decrease and though its murmur is called dragon steel murmur. So what are the complications? The patient may have left ventricular failure, right ventricular failure, into congestive cardiac failure, infected in the quantity, arrhythmia, ventricular ectopic, atrial fibrillation, pressure symptoms due to left atrium may be due to may occur life in my MS, which may be a force not to avoid atrial fibrillation and external respiratory tachycardia. These are the complications. So in examination, you have to tell whether the patient is a LVF, patient with a CCF, whether there is any features such as infecting in the quality, whether there is any arrhythmia or salivation in the sinus rhythm or any lower respiratory infection, as well as any pressure symptoms like dyspedia or the subway. Not, not commonly present, mostly it will be present in M1, but here it may be present because here also the central environment will be there. So, the evaluation of the chest x ray, ECG. So all these changes, the left ventricular head will be also hypertrophic, left ventricular head will not be hypertrophic, right ventricular will also be hypertrophic. So all these which will be there, you can tell me all the three. Patient when there's a atrial fibrillation, patient may have a atrial fibrillation. Absent P waves will be there. So right in M, uh, like in MS also, enlarged left ventricular shadow may be seen in a REI by view of barium. So barium swallow UVT. And if you take our RGA right and your oblique view, you can see in large library coming in, producing a chicken shadow. So, routine other investigations are those you have to team seal for infect and decorative and everything, urine for microscopy and maturia. You have to do echo, doctor, cardiac. Therapy. So, on these three things, you have to tell. So, in any case of your cardiac, you just what are the invasion? I'll do an EPG, I'll do an echo, do an echo, cardiography, do an. Um, Color, color double, echo double, then you do full cardiac catheterization. Just all these things, never forget, and then I will level it for asymptomatic fever. I will level it for infection in the cardiac disease, just touch like bulb back culture, and then if the patient is having fever. So, management like a uh, in either management, you have to tell diuretics, digital diuretics, penicillin prophylaxis against uh, rheumatic fever. Any, any if there's infected in the garden, you have to give antibiotics according to this. Anticoagulants, if if you have this person, you have to give a parin or or something like that. Skip from like those things. May also be less than nine eight 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 nine meters. Can reduce the regurgitation in four maybe a person. So when you just reduce the after load, that means after the diuretic resistance is being decreased, so more blood will go into the aorta, and so patient may not have permanent congestion or everything. So vasodilators will be somewhat helpful. So, digitalis, diuretics, penicillin prophylaxis against rheumatic fever, antibiotics if there is infected endocarditis, anticoagulants if there is atrial fibrillation, and vasodilators. So, surgery. So, surgery when the left ventricular end system diameter is more than 40 millimeter and left ventricular ejection factor is more than. Left ventricular ejection percentage less than 60 percentage indicates that patient has severe LV dysfunction. So, 
we can indicate surgery is indicated when there's progressive deterioration. In young patient, we can have to go for reparative procedure of mitral valve. When older patient, we have to go in for one valve replacement. Replacement surgery or reparative for valve reparative. So mitral valve replacement is done under, done under open heart surgery. Sometimes repair by mitral annuloplasty or valvuloplasty is done. This is the surgery. So mitral repair, two procedure. Mitral repair, valve repair. We are just going to suture all these things. And valve replacement. These are the two procedures surgery we are we can do. So thus, uh, when you are able, when the medical therapy fails, we have to go for surgery. When the failure of medical therapy is susceptible. If I have immediate surgery and antibiotic coverage. So when there is a recent onset of atrial fibrillation and the primary hypertension more than 50, when left ventricular angiotic is very much more than 40 or 50, left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 60 percentage. These are the indications for surgery, just a uh, biologist numbers and numbers and so on. When there's a papillary muscle rupture, we have to do emergency surgery to patch the papillary muscle rupture. So mitral valve repair for the reconstruction valve, which is accompanied by mitral valvuloplasty, the flexible processes. So mitral valve repair is done in young patient. But mitral valve repair, the main disadvantage of mitral valve, uh, mitral valve repair, main advantage is you need not, patient need not you need do give anticoagulants lifelong. So that's why in younger age, you always better go for mitral valve repair. But when you give replacement, mitral valve replacement, what is the risk means? We have to give lifelong thromboembolism, right? I already told, told in the mitral syndrome. Antigolence in patient having mechanical valves. Late substance deterioration in patient having receiving by processes. So what happened then? The valve by process, when you just use that, then it may fail. So structural deterioration, when the structural deterioration occurs as a bit of more and more calcium deposit, it may fail and may have patient may need a second surgery. So left ventricular function deteriorates after mitral valve replacement. So all these points are disadvantages. But main disadvantages is risk of thromboembolism. And so we have to give lifelong anticoagulants. That's an important risk. So my two surgeries or options are available. One is mitral valve repair, known as mitral valve replacement. So Mitral valve, we have discussed mitral stenosis already and mitral regurgitation now. So, mitral regurgitation uh, is an important examination case. So, we will discuss in the next when you, when there's a combination of lesion, what will happen when the patient is having MS as well as MR, what will be the presentation? Um, just uh, go through the slides on and off frequently, and so that you can. Easily present a case of mitral regurgitation. Tell, uh, look about the etiology. Look about the tell about the read about the etiology. Read about the murmur quality and everything. And read about the MVP. Mitral valve that is the mean commonly used. So all these you may read, you can easily get them. All the best. Bye.